Hello everybody, my name is William and this is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Today we're going to be doing a quick flight in the Britain Norman BN2 Islander from Black Box Simulations. Um, it's going to be a really short flight, just a, an overview, uh, kind of give a, um, a little bit of a representation of the plane flying around in it, and then ultimately uh, kind of my opinion on, um, on this aircraft. Uh, from Black Box Simulations. I hope you all do enjoy. If you do, make sure to give the video a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more content as always. Thank you so much and let's get into it. Alrighty everybody, welcome on board the BN2 Islander. Um, this is a look at the cockpit here. It is a, uh, it is a very simple plane. Um, it is designed in the 1960s. They're still flying today, but uh, with it being designed in the 1960s and just the nature of the plane, it's a twin-engine, uh, piston-driven uh, prop, uh, fixed landing gear, and it's a, a bit of a utility aircraft. Um, not fast, but carries a decent payload. Um, with all that kind of uh, in mind, you really uh, wouldn't expect it to be um, that that crazy, uh, but the cockpit is... Uh, a pretty nice model you got everything that you really need here um, it is nice having a GPS on board as well you've got an autopilot uh, overhead panel uh, just simple stuff fuel um, magnetos um, uh, just the basics up there there's really not a whole lot to the panel and then um, looking back into the cabin just rows of seats here and then uh, you could see the engine sitting behind the um, the uh, pilot seats there uh, so you got good visibility out the front and to the left and right uh, this is a high wing aircraft so we'll go ahead and take a look outside real quick and uh, you could just see uh, this thing is kind of just like a big van for the uh, sky um, but it is a uh, it's a pretty nice looking model all things considered uh, the cockpit there's a couple places where the textures look a little bit blurry to me um, outside of the aircraft as well depending on uh, what livery you want uh, which is a bonus i would say there are a lot of options for you a lot of real world um, liveries this one is uh, from the uh, uh, one of the james bond movies um, but yeah it's a it's a good looking airplane in my opinion um, but the majority of the time if you're if you're flying kind of like i do you're gonna be in here so uh, the cockpit it in all honesty for for what you're getting this type of plane I think it definitely does check all the boxes, as well as uh, some some nice things here. I do I think I still like the way uh, Coronado does it better with the little um, tablet that you can pull up to uh, hide and open doors and everything. But you've got switches here um, to hide the yoke instead of clicking here at the base, kind of a clickable area. I'm not sure why they did that for the yokes, um, but then for the doors as well, you've got these four switches over here, and it will uh, it will open up all the doors and you can see the pilot door open uh, the baggage door open as well as a rear passenger door it kind of looks like you can see the rear passenger seats there um, it kind of just look like lawn chairs <laughs> sitting in there that's that's about what you would expect with a plane like this and then um, you've got the uh, another passenger door here uh, just behind the um, the pilot seats up front so um, yeah, that's basically all we're going to do as far as looking into the exterior. What I'm more interested in, um, the exterior, like I said, checks all the boxes, or the, the exterior and the uh, interior modeling checks all the boxes. Um, but as I've kind of experienced with some of the add-ons, you know, the stuff like how it flies and the sound especially um, can be a big deal. So I'm going to get this thing started up. Uh, we'll take it for a short flight today. We're going to be going from Wagner to Corsica. Um, kind of the middle of nowhere, but uh, that's what we'll be doing. It's a short flight. We'll see how this thing flies, how it sounds, and uh, how it handles. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and get the uh, battery on here, um, and we'll get the uh, beacon on as well. It's hard to see, but that's uh, where the beacon light is, the bottom middle position. Um, not 100 cabin lights and uh, strobe lights down there, okay. Um, after that, we've got all of this up full. And we will go ahead and come over uh, up top here. We'll open up the uh, valve. These are both in the uh, open position. So we'll go ahead and get the um, magnetos on, uh, the fuel pumps on. 
And let's go for uh, left engine start. Simple as that. All right, left engine is up and running. So let's do the same for the uh, right. All right, right engine up and running. We'll close that guard now and uh, go ahead and kill the uh, fuel pumps. It's nice, you can actually see uh, the gauges working as you turn them on and off. We'll see that kind of dip and then go up. And then, uh, same right there, kind of dips down and then goes back up to a normal range. Um, also, we got to uh, turn on our radios. And uh, first and foremost, we might want to turn on the avionics. And then, yeah, we can um, just make sure those are all up and going. So avionics are on. Everything else looks like it's good, so it's just lights. And um, we'll go ahead and do the uh, pitot heat. And it's airframe de-ice. It does look like it has uh, boots on the um, leading edge of the wing here, so you do have some anti-icing capabilities. Plane sounds about as I would expect from the exterior. Um, also inside the plane, the engine start noise was really nice. Uh, kind of an abrupt transition, but um, it is what it is, and this looks like a pre, uh, propeller de-ice right there. So let's go ahead and get our taxi light on, and uh, we'll go ahead and get our nav lights on there. And with everything else, I think we are going to be good to go. Also worth noting on the uh, interior is, um, I believe you can, yeah, you can change this and you can actually position it exactly where you want. Um, and you've also got a uh, very handy uh, outside air temperature gauge right there on the windscreen. Um, that is very nice to have. So uh, just going to make sure I haven't missed anything. And then we will uh, taxi on and get this flight underway. See how this thing, see how this thing handles. Okay, we're going to go for uh, just hand flying it. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm not going to worry about setting up the autopilot or anything like that. We will start our taxi on out. Um, we're going to be using runway 14 here out of Wagner, so that means we're going to have to taxi a little bit, see how the ground handling is on this thing. Um, it is difficult to see where your wingtips are. If you're uh, just in the cockpit view, you could always jump outside and get an idea of it out here if you uh, really wanted to. definitely uh the the sound like i said it's nothing amazing but it is uh it is pretty good i like the the uh low level kind of whine that the engine picks up down at this uh down at this uh, low idle and i do like that the interior is kind of um uh, worn in especially i mean these things I believe they're still in production, but, you know, uh, air, airframes around from the 60s and the 70s and whatnot, they're not going to be pristine. So it is nice to see that it's got a little bit of wear and tear. Um, we are taking the, uh, we're taking, I believe it's uh, 2.7 here, and we've got to taxi down 2.7 to get ourselves to 1.4. Uh, we'll go ahead and put our flaps into the takeoff position. You've got up takeoff and uh, full down for landing. This thing is a, a monster on um, its takeoff and landing capabilities, so um, we'll see what that's like. Let's also go ahead and go landing light, and uh, we put that on pulse, so I kind of want to see if it's... Uh, they actually do. They pulse on and off. That is nice to see. Kind of uh, uh, recog lights. I am a fan of that. Alright, so just up here will be runway 14. And we will uh, line ourselves up and get ready for our departure. Here, rattling away. On the uh, on the ground. A 14 is grass as well, so we're gonna get a nice um, nice idea of how it handles that. Should not be an issue at all for this aircraft. It is weird. It's um, capabilities of how much it can carry and everything like that. And it feels like it is kind of like a low-slung low sports car with how uh, 
how on the ground it is. I'll line ourselves up on 1-4. That open bit of grass out in front of us. And then we're just going to go uh, turn direct and we're flying off to uh, Corsica. So we'll double check our trim down here. It's in the green range. Um, the trim indicated by the red there and its position uh, as long as it's in, you can see as we're moving that trim wheel, it's kind of moving up and down. So we've got it fixed there. Let's go ahead and go full power. And we're going to rotate here at 50... Uh, it was about 55 knots. We are already up and climbing out. That was a very short runway we just uh, departed off of. And we are up and away. A really good climb rate. It is nice and slow. We're going to make a uh, right, um, right crosswind to right downwind and depart. So let's go ahead and go for our right turn. It's a bit boxy, so we just want to make sure that we uh, stay on the rudder and keep the turn coordinated. We're just going to keep climbing on up. Let's go ahead and get our flaps in. Handled about as expected. I still just so much lift. Uh, these wings are not designed for speed or anything like that. They are designed to, uh, <laughs> to give you all the lift you can handle. And we'll go ahead and turn our uh, downwind now. Doesn't take a whole lot of rudder to uh, keep it coordinated. We definitely do need to uh, kind of keep it coordinated from to uh, stop it from slipping around. And uh, you really got to watch, make sure you don't start climbing. It just wants to uh, keep going up, up, up. And here we go. Go ahead and level out. Kind of overshot a little bit, but that's fine. So we're going to put some uh, nose down trim in it, see how easy it is to kind of trim out. I'm also going to go ahead and uh, pull the uh, prop RPM back a little bit. That's what we can see on this uh, green gauge here. Pulled it back a little bit. It is uh, definitely a nice uh, sound difference there. hear what this thing sounds like. It's nice and droney, expect, exactly what uh, you would kind of expect from a, a twin engine prop. We have a short little flight. Um, we're just going about 20 miles here up to the uh, north. We're going to be landing on another grass strip and it will be uh, runway uh, 17 that I believe is going to be in favor with the uh, winds in the area. So it is, I would say it's actually pretty easy to uh, trim out if, uh, if you're into hand flying. I've got very, very little pressure on, the, um, on my um, controls right now. But uh, this is something uh, to keep in mind with this aircraft. It is not fast at all. We are chugging along uh, 146 knots across the ground. Um, you can see the airspeed here. We're basically almost pegged out in the uh, green arc. So it's, it's not designed for speed. That is for sure. While we uh, kind of transit, I'm going to jump outside and let's see what it sounds like from the exterior as we're in flight.
once again with the sounds, um, nothing crazy special, but it's also uh, not a disappointment at all. It sounds about the way you would expect it to, in my opinion anyways. And um, like I said, not, not, not saying it's the greatest, uh, greatest sounds on earth at all, but uh, it does sound um, within expectations and and it does sound decent uh, to me. Also, uh, while we were on the outside, it was nice being able to see the um, the beacon on the tail. I'm not sure if I've noticed that in anything else, uh, uh, but you could actually see it uh, it rotating. Uh, that that's a nice touch with uh, something like this. But we are just flying around now. Um, on our way in, we're about uh, 11 and a half miles out. It is, once again, I'd say, uh, even though it's just the, the normal uh, Garmin, it is really nice having a, a GPS in something like this if you just want a, a casual approach to these things. Um, this GPS will basically do everything that you need it to do, uh, no problem at all. And then if you actually want to um, get a little bit more uh, into it and use uh, some radios to navigate. You've got uh, everything you need here uh, basically to make that happen. So um, that is nice as well depending on uh, what you're interested in. You have that, uh, you have those options. So um, we're going to go ahead and actually I want to see. We're going to pull the prop back a little bit more. It definitely does sound um, like you could he you can hear the uh, engine. At least I think I think I can hear the engine. Uh, the prop is obviously the dominant sound um, that you're going to be hearing, but it is nice being able to kind of make those distinctions. We're going to go ahead and pull the uh, prop back up. It just sounds a little bit better. Gives a little bit uh, better performance as well. But yeah. Um, not a, not a plane that you're going to be going anywhere fast in. I think that is really the main point. Um, this is something uh, slow, in and out of uh, short strips. Um, you know, maybe not the best condition airports, stuff like that. If that's the kind of flying you enjoy, this aircraft is great for it. Uh, you can do, uh, obviously, um, some proper uh, flights in it if you uh, don't mind the, um, the lack of speed. And ultimately, from what I can gather, at the moment anyways, uh, it's really nice to hand fly. Um, it was pretty easy to uh, trim out. Um, and just uh, super light on the um, inputs I've got to make just to kind of keep it going straight. And uh, the altitude I want it on, no problems at all. And if, uh, if I wanted to take a, take a break, step away or something, you do have the autopilot there. Um, so it's, it's, not, it's not like uh, you, you, you're forced into hand flying this thing uh, the entire time either. So um, yeah, it is what it is with that. Ultimately, um, it kind of brings us around to talking about the uh, price for this thing. Um, I believe it's uh, 25 euros, which I think is somewhere around $30 uh, US. Um, I have to say, uh, honestly, I think it's worth it. In my opinion, it's a, it's a really cool plane. It's unique. Um, it is super simple. Uh, in that regard, it is, uh, should be accessible to basically everybody. Uh, you should be able to get in this thing and actually fly it. Uh, which is nice. Um, I understand it's not going to be for everybody. It is slow. It's not the sexiest plane in the world. And if it's not your thing, um, you know, you're not going to enjoy it either way. But if this is your thing, I think you'll enjoy this aircraft. Uh, that's my personal opinion on it. I think um, as well, from what I've heard from Black Box uh, Simulations, who made this aircraft, uh, they are really good about uh, pushing out updates, uh, fixing bugs, and um, stuff like that. So uh, as far as the developers concerned, I've heard great things. This is my first aircraft with them. I almost bought the uh, their, their aircraft, the Bird Dog, um, but I kind of just talked myself out of it a little bit. Uh, I'm, it just wasn't, wasn't quite my thing, uh, not whenever I enjoy the uh, Cubs as much as I do. 
but uh, this thing definitely is is a little bit more my thing. So um, with that anyways, let's go ahead and see how this thing lands. We have our grass strip right here, so we're going to cross um, basically right over the uh, departure end of, of the field here uh, since we're going to be going for runway 17. I'm going to enter uh, left traffic. Uh, it should be a little bit difficult to try and uh, keep the uh, airfield spotted, um, but we'll do what we can here. And uh, we're descending down a little bit. I'm going to give myself a little bit more nose up trim as we cross over. Nice looking grass strip down there. And uh, did I open this at some point? I'm not. Uh, no, that was just my, uh, my brain playing tricks on me. All right, so uh, we're going to try and make a decently short approach. So let's go ahead and get our uh, first notch of our flaps out. And we'll see how, how slow we can get this thing. And give ourselves some more uh, trim. We're already down to 80 knots. It says on here, on the dash right here, it's kind of hard to read, but the uh, minimal controllable airspeed demonstrated is something like 39 knots. Uh, it's insanely slow. When you get this slow, you're really going to have to make sure um, you're on the rudder. All right, we've got the airfield in sight now off of our left wing. Going to give it a little bit of power. We lost quite a bit of altitude. This is uh, kind of a... This aircraft handles just differently. Um, it, it doesn't feel like a generic flight model at all. It actually... I've never flown one of these things, so I can't really say. Um, but it, it does feel like it's a, a bit big and 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 uh, a little bit more cumbersome than it feels when you're in the uh, cockpit the visibility out the front is really nice having said that that uh, the um, the the split here in the windscreen is uh, is rather large so when you're on approach that is uh, kind of right in the way we're right about 60 knots feels like we are barely moving we've got a headwind as well a little bit of a crosswind so we're doing just uh, 50 knots across the ground. We could get it even slower if we wanted to, just want to keep it uh, decent. First landing in this, in this thing, so. We can go ahead and pull that power on out. Nope. And there is the uh, touchdown. And we are on the ground. I didn't jump on the brakes super hard or anything like that. Uh, there was no need to. We were going so slow anyways. Uh, we'll just taxi off over here and park it up. The one thing, the one sound I will say I'm not a huge fan of is the, uh, the immediate rattle. Um, when you, uh, when you touch down. There is like an immediate rattle, I'm sure you guys heard as we landed. It sounds a little bit unnatural, in my opinion. It just immediately jumps to uh, the same kind of looping rattle. But that's just me. <clears throat> that's that's probably being a little bit on the picky side. So with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and call this one a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed the flight and uh, this gave you some insight. There are some things that are a little bit... Um, you know, a, a little not not the not the greatest quality, but for the price of this aircraft, if this is your kind of thing, I definitely think you'll enjoy it. So, um, if you guys pick it up and uh, and you have your opinion, feel free to share it in the video below or in the comments below. Even if you don't agree with me, it might help somebody else make an informed decision on this. At the end of the day, it is uh, y'all's hard-earned money. And uh, while this isn't the most expensive necessarily, um, you know, it all adds up over time. So um, uh, being able to make informed decisions on that kind of thing can definitely uh, be helpful to others. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, bye-bye.